Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love and today we'll be experimenting with some watercolors, exploring the power of marks and stencils, and using a variety of supplies to create unique and captivating abstracts and landscapes. So let's dive in and let our creativity flow as we embark on this exciting artistic journey together. Let's do some intuitive painting today. So I have started off with a piece of large watercolor paper. I'm using the Canson Heritage, 100%, 140 pound um, cold press paper, 100% cotton. And this is the larger pad. This is the uh, 10 by 14 size. It's a tiny bit larger than that, but it's approximately 10 by 14. And so I just divided the paper in half and then I did four, 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 and whatever's left over. So the leftover bits are going to be super cool because they'll be like little micro pieces of art that we can then frame or give away or use as bookmarks. They're like a nice little bonus that we can have there at the end. And I want to play today in the Ganzai Tambi Graphite Watercolors. This is the set of six by Kiritaki. And it has red, yellow, green, blue, violet, and graphite brown in here. So these are some yummy colors. I've got a little swatch set that I just created. Um, and I don't know if you've been on my Skillshare channel any, but I was obsessed with the graphite watercolors a while back like so obsessed and when you're obsessed with an art product I fully recommend you dive right into that obsession and so I made a whole bunch of my own colors uh, with the graphite and it's basically watercolor paint and graphite powder um, and you create watercolors with it so I made a whole watercolor class on how to make your own watercolor graphites if you love these as much as I do and you feel like I need more colors you can create your own and I experimented with that uh, to a pretty good extent. I used powders uh, to make full watercolors all the way up to using some pre-made watercolors that I mixed graphite powder with and then painted with. So you've got a lot of options there and it's pretty easy. And I love graphite. I love water-soluble graphite pencils and sticks and watercolors. It's like the most versatile product. So today I thought we'd just make a set of intuitive painting graphite watercolors and then on top of that we'll do some stencil work and just see what we get and I really love just mark making and we're just going to treat this like it's one big piece and when we peel the tape you get really cool uh, differences and I'm just burying up the sticks why not and I love scribbling underneath things because even if you cover it up that's okay the main point of this was to make the page messed up already get you past blank page paralysis and I have two brushes that I could be using I could do some atmospheric landscapey ones or I could do some full-on abstract ones or we could split it up and we could do some atmospheric landscapes and we could do some abstracts. You could just kind of play and, and figure out what do you want to do here. Um, I've, I really love my bamboo number four Winsor & Newton bamboo brush. Love that brush. It's very unpredictable, which is what I like about it. And if unpredictable is scary, um, that might not be the way to go. And then I also love my Raphael Soft Aqua quill brush. This is a zero, my very favorite paint brush. So I've got those two out. And I'm feeling atmospheric landscapey almost personally. And now that I messed up the page, did I mess it up in such a way that we're messed up? I don't think so. Let's just do this. And I'm almost feeling like maybe I want to give this blue a try out because I've never actually used the blue in here. And so what if, let's just do some, let's do some abstracts. Let's start with some abstracts start at the further away from you and work towards where your hands are leaning down on so i <laughs> can't tell you how many times i work backwards and i work towards this way and my hands all over the work i already did so just be real careful with that now the reason that i love the graphite watercolor is because they're magical and before i get too far i want to show you how magical they are so once you put this stuff on it looks very smoky it turns the color very smoky and just uh really cool but it's got a little bit of a graphite undertone to it and you can take the back of say like a spoon i like a spoon because it's very handy and you can burnish 
that piece. And then as I get closer, you can really kind of see how it's got that gray metallic pencil kind of sheen underneath it. And I've already burnished this one a little. So you have that extra element in your piece. It's so cool. Besides the fact that I just love that it's beautiful and smoky. Um, just my own preferences there. And I think they're gorgeous. And I became so obsessed that I, I made like class after class. And then I'm like, I need more colors. And so I definitely had fun. With the, with the graphite stuff. And they're still some of my very favorite watercolors. Even though I also have those yummy Japanese watercolors, those Art Nouveau collection of the Gansai Tambi colors. Those colors are so gorgeous too. So <laughs> I'm definitely a shiny syndrome kind of art person. I want the next shiny thing and that's the thing I'm obsessed with and I love bringing y'all along with me and making you just as obsessed with the stuff that I love. My art making is more about experimenting, figuring stuff out, playing. I'm not a let's paint something specific kind of girl. I have figured out. What if, okay, so what if I throw something in on you here? Ha ha ha! There it was a moment not too long ago when I was obsessed with the fan brush because it creates some really cool marks and lines. And what if, yeah, I like the stiff ones. What if, what if, that's my favorite phrase. What if, let's not get it on our paper yet. What if we came back with the purple? Let's just see what it does. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, whoa. <laughs> look at that. Eek. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Totally outside my comfort zone with the color palette here. Um, but wow, who cares? Amazing. <laughs> this is how you discover new things. Like, what will I like? What is this going to do? <gasps> All right, so I'm definitely, these are the abstracts up top. I feel like when we get to the uh, landscapes on the bottom that I plan, that the fan brush is a nice option. <gasps> Look at here, we could come in here with some marks. Look at the fun marks that we get with the fan brush. Um, I'm feeling like this could be an element that we do in the landscapes. I didn't plan on it, but you know what, as I'm working, I'm like, oh, I'm feeling this. Oh yeah, let's do that. Let's see, what else, what can we do? Let's do some down here. <laughs> I think in another life, I really wanted to be Bob Ross. Let's paint some happy little marks over here. <laughs> oh my gosh, these are insane. Insane already. Oh yeah, love it, love it. Okay, let's. Let's think on this. So I feel like maybe I want to do some stencil work on top of that. Maybe we want to come down here and make some abstract landscapes. So I'm using my bamboo brush for these because I like to roll it around and just, <gasps> oh yeah, look at that. Oh, which is not very different from actually what I was getting up here with the way I was using my brush and stuff. Um, but at the same time, it is a little different. So, and I like that I've kind of kept the marks a little lower on these, not all the way to the very tippy top there, um, which is kind of important. I don't want to necessarily those big marks on a landscape. I could have thought that out a little better. But sometimes, you know, you got to kind of go with the flow when you're doing and thinking and you're like, oh, what if I did this? all about that in the moment creating and just seeing like what can you create what if you did this or that oh you know what before this gets dry up here and before i put my next color on i want to do some uh, water blooms and stuff with this you got to do it while it's damp not while it's sopping wet and not when it's dry um, because we can make some super cool blooming of the color this stuff makes crazy amazing blooms but once that water is dry it doesn't work the same so do this while it's damp and you can do 
you can pick a color and do that same color on all the pieces and lend to the consistency of the piece. You could pick a different color each time. You could do this on every single color, but I'm kind of focusing here on the blue. Let's balloon out the blue. Oh yeah, just, just cause. <laughs> okay, let's go back with the right with the violet. Woo, with the violet. Oh, graphite violet. And if you do this and it's too light, let's say it dries and you're like, oh, that's too light. It needs some contrast. Don't be afraid. Just did that with the blue. Don't be afraid to come back with another layer on top. And we could do that with some of these pieces. Let's just see what we get because I'm trying my best to have the contrast on this first layer. But let's say some of it's too light and we're like, oh, I need some more. Then we will come back and add another layer after this first layer dries. It's just about experimenting and seeing like what what are we getting oh look at this color so pretty oh my gosh i just feel it like we're in the mountains it's a foggy morning nothing's awake yet and we're looking at the beauty in front of us oh can you feel it i'm kind of feeling it <laughs> Oh, these are gorgeous, gorgeous. These are gorgeous. Now we could too, I'm newly obsessed with the granulation medium, granulation medium. And I've never tried it here on the graphite watercolors. Perfect time to experiment. So I got a pipette and we could pipette some of this granulation medium onto our watercolors and just see like, what do we get? And we can just do a little bit maybe here on the landscapes. Just pipe that some of that out there as an extra element and we don't have to put it everywhere maybe just strategically in a place or two and just see like what does it do how is it different than say the ones that we put water on just have some fun it's all about what does this supply do and how can I push it and what can I get it to do for me all right so there's that Oh, I love this Windsor Newton granulation medium. I, I feel like I, I need a gallon of it. I love it so much. I did a whole little couple videos on the granulation medium on how super cool it was. All right, so now, now we need to think, do we want to put some salt on any of the pieces? You need to put the salt on before it's dry. Once it's too dry, it's not really going to work. So as you are working with these top pieces, if you wanted a little bit of salt in there, now would have been the time to put the salt, like before you move to the second set, you kind of want that all to be damp and sprinkle some salt. Because I did water and granulation medium, I'm not going to do the salt, but I just want to throw that option out there for you. So let's let this dry and then we'll come back and see what do we want to do on a layer above that. So I thought we could do some mark making and you could do dots or stencil marks or neocolor to crayons or any kind of thing that you find exciting on top of your pieces. I'm currently obsessed with some fusion paint colors so I'm actually got these over here because I don't know I'm obsessed with them and when you get excited about whatever do more of that. And I've got this yummy sage green. This is called lichen. These fusion paints are mineral paints and you can very easily substitute any kind of acrylic paint for these things that I'm doing with the stencil, but I love the colors and I don't have to mix them up and I can just jump right into experimenting and playing at this point. And I like this lichen and I'm almost feeling like it might be a nice contrast to the blue purple that we had going on there. I also have this color called lamp white, which is a yummy, pretty grayish white. I think it fits right in there with these smoky colors. I also have this yummy chessler, which is the most beautiful dark teal kind of color and I've got some prairie sunset which is basically like a yellow ochre and this is champness which is the most gorgeous blue this is my very favorite color and I'm thinking stenciling in some of this so we could contrast we could do something the same I've obviously already done something with an ochre here but I'm kind of feeling like I am in love with this stencil. It's a stencil girl stencil, stencil 575, and it looks like uh, waves or curtains, or you could do all kinds of stuff here um, with the look of this. And I thought, let's play with this. And I also have another stencil here 
which is stencil 574 and it looks like coffee rings and of course you can make your own coffee rings but I thought mm, why not ha <laughs> ha so I'm feeling like these possibly for the top and then I've got some others here for maybe the bottom and I've got stencil 227 that I particularly love um, with lines that are irregular and stencil 376 because I love the little dash marks and you can of course do little dash marks yourself with like a Posca pen that'd be cool and then of course I got a Punchinella my very favorite stencil ever Punchinella is the stuff that they use to punch sequins out of and this is the metal mesh that's left over after the sequin is punched out and this comes in different shapes and different sizes I've got some bigger ones I've got some smaller ones um, the smaller one is my very favorite but the larger one's good if you're doing a larger piece of art you might want larger things um, so I've got all of these right here to the side because I plan on using them all right so I really want maybe a few coffee rings under stuff and then the big curtain thing on top let's see so I wonder I really want to do that curtain in a blue or maybe I want to do that yellow or maybe I want to do that dark color Ooh, or maybe I want to do this green Ooh, so what if we did okay so what if I did some coffee rings in the blue and um, and then I did the lacy stuff in this I've got some art sponges over here it's just a round sponge I've cut into fours and you can get these off of Amazon it's called art sponge and you want to dry and you want basically dry paint um, because um, the dry paint and the dry sponge is what gives you a really beautiful stencil oh see ah oh, perfect that's exactly kind of what I wanted will the lichen be contrasty enough I don't know we're gonna do it though because that's the thought I had in my mind we're just gonna go with it might be the right choice might not just got to ride that wave of inspiration and just see what you get and if it wasn't right it's okay these are little intuitive paintings that you can continue to layer on or you can move on to the next painting they're just experimenting and discovering that's basically what I use these for look how pretty that is Arr! I love that all right so I'm almost wondering if I shouldn't do more contrasty. Oh, see, I'm loving that green, though. I'm feeling the green. All right, so here it is. All right, so maybe, maybe, what, do we want to go to the side or kind of bring it down like it's the curtain falling? Let's just try it on this one. Oh, I got some paint in the lid. That's perfect. <laughs> let's see what we got oh look how cool that is okay I'm almost feeling like maybe let's come in on the side on this one let's do something a little different this is how we figure out stuff experimenting I'm loving from the side that was really interesting okay let's come down from the top on this one but I've got it over to the side where I've got this more interesting pattern here or it's at least varied more varied pattern how about that because the whole thing is very interesting let's just try <laughs> I like those too. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Let's do this one on this little piece here. Get a little paint here on my sponge. You don't want too much paint. You want it to be kind of dry. If that didn't sound country, kind of dry. <laughs> Just laugh with me. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love the stencil so much. <gasps> Look at that one. Oh, I love the stencil. Okay. Yeah. Oh, 
so pretty. So I'm actually loving this green so much. And I did kind of love the blue. Now let's just continue our blue and green on the lower set. Feeling like green should be the yummy marks like this. And maybe the blue, because they're a little more subtle, should be our yummy marks here. And I'm just going to do these a little haphazardly, not all exact. And, oh, that's what I wanted! <laughs> oh my goodness, that's what I wanted. All right, let's just go for it. This is my favorite stencil. I love the stencil. Oh, I love that. A little bit down here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling it. I am feeling it. I'd pick this up, but the board has got paint on it at the moment. We'll take a look at these in a second. Okay, let's do this one. Brr. Oh, so beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Just vary that up. Look at that. I like how those are varied. Okay, let's do the yummy green. Feeling the green now. And I'm doing it with the yummy striped one. So again, this one, this one was that 376. This one is that 227. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. And again, not being super exact, I want it to kind of flow through the <gasps> flow through the piece. Arr! I like that. Could have been a little bit lighter handed on that, but yeah, perfect. And I want you to go kind of fast. I don't want you to think too hard about these. I don't want you to get stuck on a decision. I want you to move it along and you get what you get and just love it. All right, so I am kind of feeling like, let me close my paint pots or I will dump something on everything. I'm extra clumsy in the paint department. And I am kind of feeling like gold punchinella. Cause I feel like gold punchinella should go on everything. <laughs> I think it should go on everything. My favorite gold is Makurataki gold mica paste. You can use any gold paint that you have that you want to substitute that you've got on hand. I have let that dry on that sponge. I love this paste because it is amazing. It is like suck them in your face amazing. It's like gold. <laughs> it shines pretty in the light. It gives you pretty patterns. Hang on, let's put some more of this out. This stuff goes a long way. Like I've been on the same tube for a while and I use gold on everything that I can stick gold on. Um, so and I love the gold ink that they have. So if you get the ink, the ink is amazing also. The ink is a little bit wet for doing the stencils, I found, which is why I like the paste because I can, um, it's thicker and it's not as liquidy and it doesn't sink, you know, seep up under the stencil. Oh, I just love the gold. Oh, just a bit of yumminess. Okay, so let's just do the gold down there. Let's think right up here. What do we want to do on top of what we've already got there? Do we want to do any extra marks? Do we want to do any writing? Do we want to do any dots with our Posca pen? I mean, Posca pen dots. And I've got yummy white in here. I could come back in here and add some strategic marks with yummy white dots. I'm a dot girl. And we could just fill in some extra interest and details uh, on our piece. I like picking areas where there's pretty blooms and picking part of that to do dots in. I think that's always pretty. Um, just something to add an extra bit of interest, intrigue, like what's going on in there? You have to get closer to take a look. Oh, I'm really loving this over here. I've got a great big wood paint stick that I use as my hand guard. 
and I just keep it lifted off the paper. Um, and this is like for the big five gallon buckets of paint or you use yardstick um, or any kind of stick that you have really. Um, and I like to keep it off my paper because I tend to work in the wrong direction. <laughs> I don't know why <laughs> and it allows you to keep working because it's lifted off and it gives you plenty of hand support for painting or dot making or whatever it is that you want to do that you don't want to put your hand in I love it everybody needs one of these <laughs> and I'm sure they sell these at the art store in a very expensive this is an art <laughs> item kind of way because I've seen little round ones um, but trust me if you just go to the paint store this is way cheaper than one you might get at the art store and sometimes I like to pick like if I've got like a light blue color running through the piece maybe all the light blue part of that gets a dot that's always fun oh yeah see I love that I'm digging it Oh my gosh, I can't wait to peel the tape. You know, and I like it this much before I've even peeled the tape, I get super excited. Ooh, see, we can keep going. And then once you peel the tape, if you're like, ooh, it needs something else, you can keep working on it until you're like, oh yeah, this is perfect. A lot of times though, I'm like, I love it like it is. <laughs> but that's kind of preference sometimes you didn't go far enough and you're like what else does it need and if you don't know set it to the side live with it for a while and then think okay now I know what it needs then finish it off you don't have to finish things off right now okay I'm really loving what we got going on here oh my goodness I kind of feel like call me crazy kind of feeling like maybe this one needs a few extra we don't even have to see it really heavily, but maybe a few extra details on here. So I've just got that graphite pencil and I'm just adding some very subtle. You're not going to see them until you get close to the piece, but they added in, filled in that spot that I'm like, eh, missing something, but I don't know what. Okay, I'm actually loving those and these. Oh, I think I love them. Okay, so let's peel tape and see what we've got so far. <laughs> it's my favorite part. And you'll see how easy this tape comes off. Don't jinx me here by saying that. Hang on, I must have put this one on first. Last. Um, this is artist tape uh, that I get at the Dick Blick, or you can get artist tape on Amazon, or you can use painter's tape from the paint store, which I've got one that I'm almost out of. That stuff works great. You do not want to use masking tape or anything stronger than that. And if you're peeling, you see how easy that peeled and didn't tear my paper? Make sure your paper is dry from the watercolors or whatever you've used before you start to peel and kind of peel at an angle and go slow and if you see paper tearing stop get your heat gun out heat the tape up and let that tape release from whatever it's sticking to because if you're using a paper that's not hundred percent cotton then it more like more than likely has wood pulp in it in addition to whatever and possibly cotton and it's grabbing that pulp and pulling it and that's the way you can get it to release if you'll heat that tape up a bit oh these are all ready exciting I was talking and not looking but now that I stopped the look I'm getting very excited the little landscapes are gorgeous like look at this <laughs> oh my gosh well, I just love painting with stuff and then peeling that tape because no matter what you paint it if you peel the tape and it has a white border it magically looks like a piece of art <laughs> so if there's something that you really love try to do that every time and I love peeling tape so use tape every time <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, holy moly. Holy moly. Look at these. Arr! Look at that. Oh my gosh. Let's pull these in close and take a look. Look at that. I love all the marks and the details. Now you can see the little bit of dots that I've got in there. You can see that little extra bit that I drew in as an interest point. And look at these yummy atmospheric abstracty landscapey yummy bits holy cow are those not gorgeous I'm gonna cut these apart and then we'll see what our final look is oh 
was so excited. And this is way outside my color palette. I'm usually a blue green girl or an orange and pink and red kind of girl. And these are stepping outside that comfort zone. But look at how amazing it is when you step outside your comfort. All right, so let me just cut these. All right, check it out. Holy cow, these are so good. Look at these yummy little bookmark sized pieces that we made. These are like the most perfect miniature pieces of art that can either be framed or gifted or used as gift tags, or you could, you know, uh, give these as gifts in a card. Uh, they're so amazing and they're little bits. They're also wonderful if you enjoy collecting color palettes. If you have a sketchbook that you've cr you know, created for color palettes, I'm going to show you one that I keep. Let me grab that. Um, so these are perfect for this kind of yummy thing, but you put a color palette piece with the colors in it and you kind of create your own yummy color palette book. So you can see how this perfectly would go in here, put your colors in there. If you're using an old book to do that, like what I like to do, gesso the page and then look how fun your little art book is with little color palettes that you've saved for yourself because this is way outside my comfort zone and if i make notes of what these colors are in a little color palette book then i could revisit that sometime when i'm like ooh, wonder what i did there um, so that's just a fun little extra if you got this far in the video <laughs> that everybody else won't have <laughs> and look at these i like that i've got the stencil in different areas on all three of these i like that the green contrasts everything else that's in there it's like a nice little yummy surprise and this is like the perfect triptych all of these paintings today came out amazing sometimes i'm like oh i don't like this one of the three or only like this one of the three today I like all of these. The reason why I like to paint them in threes or fours or even like even bigger like this is because usually there's like one that I love and several that I'm like, eh, these are okay. But the one that I love made the whole day of painting worth it. Today, I got eight pieces that I love. So I'm like, oh, good day painting. So I hope you enjoyed playing today with me at my art table. If you love watching these videos, definitely subscribe to my channel. And I can't wait to see you next time.